In this video I will show how uh, easy it is to share a single Kafka cluster deployed in OpenShift with Strimzy uh, into several different OpenShift clusters uh, using the Scupper project. So I have three different OpenShift clusters, two of them are running in AWS, one is in uh, Ireland, I will use this one as my main cluster, another one is uh, in the US and then I have locally running uh, MiniShift uh, as well. And uh, first let's create uh, a namespace uh, on all of these. So uh, kubectl create ns uh, scupper demo. And let's uh, create it on all of these. And let's uh, make the namespace default. So uh, I'm using this uh, NS utility, which uh, is super nice. It will uh, change your cube config context uh, to set some namespace as a default. So you don't need to use all the time these dash n options and so on. And now when I have these namespaces all uh, installed there, I can uh, initialize scupper. So that's the first cluster, second cluster, and the first cluster. Now uh, it will take a moment to download the pods uh, and so on. We can in the meantime find the namespace and you can see I was really bad at naming the namespace because it's at the end of the list. But we should already see that the scupper pods are creating. Uh, already running uh, locally because I think I had the images cached uh, running in the US and uh, they are running uh, in Ireland as well. So uh, now let's. Uh, create the token to link these clusters together. So I will use the cluster in Ireland as my main cluster and I will create a token there. So that created the token and now uh, let's use the token to connect from the US cluster and from uh, my mini shift. Now uh, let's try the scupper status to see if they connected. It's connected to two other sides. That's great. So uh, that should be scupper. And now uh, when the clusters are connected, we have to deploy the uh, the Streamzy cluster operator. So uh, I will copy paste this nice command. I will use streamz 16 release candidate one, but there's no special reason for it. There's no special functionality in uh, streamz to make this possible. So uh, let's deploy it. And I had to use set to change the namespace because uh, dash n command is ignored when you have namespace in the cluster role bindings to say to which service account do you want to give uh, the role. Uh, now uh, the operator is still creating but uh, we can uh, check the file which I will use to create the Kafka cluster. So it's really a regular file from the examples. Uh, Streamzy can of course expose the Kafka cluster to the outside of the OpenShift cluster using load balancers or node ports, but I'm not using that. I'm using just the internal plane and TLS interfaces. Uh, so I'm not using directly any routes. Uh, and let's do OC apply on this cluster. And uh, now it will take uh, some time for the pods uh, to get started. So it's starting the zookeeper now. 
uh, it will take a few seconds. So what we will do after the cluster gets deployed is uh, we will first uh, install here or deploy into this cluster some simple producer and consumer, which should really just connect to the cluster and start producing messages uh, locally and uh, remotely. We also create the topic and uh, then uh, once we see that the cluster is working fine locally, we can use Scupper to expose the cluster and try to connect to it from the two other clusters as well. So the zookeeper is deploying. It always takes a few minutes because it needs to pull the images and uh, it uh, needs to make sure the zookeeper cluster is bootstrapped and uh, then it will proceed with the Kafka cluster. So I hope the images are not crashing or anything. Check it here as well and see that they are just pulling slowly and getting ready now. So now they are ready, now it's pulling the Kafka images. Uh, sometimes pulling of the images in AWS can be, for whatever reason, quite slow. But uh, so in the meantime, we can have a look at the Kafka clients we are going to deploy here. So I will use the Kafka topic operator to uh, create a simple topic, which is called Kafka test apps. It has 12 partitions and three replicas. It has some configuration for the retention and so on. And then I deploy a simple producer deployment. Uh, will be sending uh, a message per second uh, every thousand millisecond it will send one message it will send the messages with a different key and it will use the message uh, from uh, it's actually wrong this should say uh, from uh, EU West 1 and then uh, here we will be consuming and this should again say EU West 1 did I open the right file and uh, so once the cluster is deployed, we will just deploy these, the producer will start sending messages, the consumer will start consuming them. It's fairly simple. So the pods are running, the entity operator is now deploying. So uh, let's give it some more time. Uh, still getting started. always impatient with making videos. Uh, I have to wait uh, for the images to be pulled. So now it should be running. So uh, let's deploy the client and let's switch to the UI. And we have the consumer here. It's still pulling the images. So now the images are pulled. Uh, let's open the logs. You can see that it's joining there. And you can see that it's now receiving some messages. Uh, and you can see that it's receiving the from EUS1 uh, and some timestamp. So that's uh, pretty simple. So now we have Kafka running in uh, the main cluster. And uh, now, how do we expose it to the other clusters? And now that's where the scupper comes uh, into the game. So uh, if you know something about Kafka, you know uh, it has its own discovery protocol uh, where each node advertises its address and the clients need to connect there. So it's not as easy as mirroring a single load balancer service or cluster IP service. We have to mirror the headless service for the whole Kafka stateful set. And I can do it with this uh, scupper expose uh, command where I say, okay, I want to expose the headless service of the stateful set my cluster Kafka. And I want to expose the port 9092. And when I do that, uh, 
Scupper will start creating uh, some components in the target clusters. So uh, you can see that here it's starting some pods, which are actually named in the same way as uh, the pods uh, of the actual Kafka cluster. So it's kind of mirroring them. This is important because uh, if you know how stateful sets and headless services work, they kind of give each pod of the stateful set a host name, which is like pod name, dash, uh, dot name of the headless service, dot name of the namespace. Uh, so uh, Scupper needs to mirror the exact names of the pods and the exact names of the service. The service seems to be running now in Minishift locally. It seems to be still starting uh, in the US cluster. Uh, so let's now deploy again the same clients uh, as we deployed uh, in the Ireland cluster. Here I will just not create the topics because the topic already exists and anyway it will be ignored here. But apart from that it's really the same application. Just the message is different. This one says from Minishift. So uh, let's do OC apply or kubectl apply if you want. Uh, creates the consumer and the producer and uh, when I switch here I should see them creating so let's wait for the images to be pulled the proxy pods are already here in the meantime as well so uh, kubectl apply uh, US East Kafka clients uh, and let's deploy these uh, to here into the US cluster as well and switch to the browser. The images here are pulled in the meantime and when I open the consumer I see that it's still uh, subscribing. You know, it's joining the group uh, and now you can see that it's getting the messages and it's getting the from uh, US one messages. So uh, now you can see that it's connected to the remote cluster and uh, it's consuming the messages from there. And now you can see that the messages from Minishift, which is here, and from the US East started arriving as well. So uh, as the producer started kind of at different times, they sent some messages up front. But you can now see that it's always receiving three messages per second. Uh, and we should see the same actually in uh, the US cluster as well, uh, where we can see how it's always getting EU West, uh, US East uh, from Minishift. So all three messages. Uh, and that involves this cluster as well, where uh, once again, we are getting the messages from all clusters. So uh, you can see that uh, with one simple scupper command, we expose the Kafka cluster and we can run the clients there. It's uh, between the OpenShift clusters, it's secured using the scupper tunnel. Uh, and uh, we can access it uh, as if the cluster would be running locally in uh, the same OpenShift cluster as the clients. There, uh, depending on where the clusters are, there will be, of course, some uh, latency. So you don't be the physics uh, and the distance between US, Ireland and uh, Czech Republic. But uh, that's it for this demo. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully this was useful to show uh, the power of Scupper and uh, how it can be used with uh, Kafka.